Good ideas stand as the backbone of good government. And today we're unveiling the government's ideas for the upcoming financial year. Good governance is also being manifested through the Child Protection and Family Services Agency, CPFSA, particularly with the observation of National Foster Care Recognition Week. Our show offers much information today, and we crave your attention right to the very end. I'm Theodore Henry, and welcome to Jamaica Magazine. Let's see what's happening in today's news. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Wednesday, February 16, 2022. The Ministry of Education has announced changes to this year's administration of the primary exit profile, PEP, in response to education stakeholders' concerns about the hardships facing students as the pandemic continues to affect learning. The Grade 6 performance-based tests scheduled for March 22 and 24 have been cancelled. At the same time, the Grade 6 Ability Test is postponed from its originally scheduled date of February 22 to March 24. Students will sit the Grade 6 curriculum-based tests on the dates originally announced, April 27 for Language Arts and Science and April 28 for Mathematics and Social Studies. Those in Grade 5 will have their performance task exams in Language Arts and Science on June 8 and Mathematics and Social Studies on June 9. Grade 4 performance tasks in Literacy and Language Arts will be administered on June 29 with Numeracy and Mathematics set for June 30. A bulletin issued by the Ministry reveals that the decision to delay or cancel certain PEP exams followed consultations with members of the National Standards Curriculum and PEP Monitoring Committee. Runway extension works at the Sangster International Airport will begin during the first quarter of this year. Transport Minister Audley Shaw has signed a 34 million US dollar contract with UK-based Lagan Aviation and Infrastructure Limited and HJ Martin Holdings Limited to undertake the project. The work is estimated to be completed in the second quarter of 2023. It will include establishing runway and safety areas, relocating thresholds and navigational aids, and increasing the takeoff run available for the primary runway from 2,662 meters to 3,060 meters. During the recent contract signing ceremony, Minister Shaw commended MBJ Airports, which operates Sangster International, for investing in the development of the facility. This is important to enable SIA to accommodate and better serve direct flights from more distant destinations such as Asia. In other words, when this expansion is completed, um, wide-bodied aircrafts that carry about 300 to 350 people will be able to land at this airport. The extension works is part of a 70 million US dollar runway expansion project. The Jamaica Mortgage Bank, JMB, will be mobilizing financial resources for on-lending to developers in the 2022-23 financial year to increase the supply of housing solutions in the country. This is outlined in the public body's estimates of revenue and expenditure for the year ending March 2023. The JMB will be mobilizing resources to fund approximately 162 housing developments for the financial year. It will also seek to drive growth of mortgage indemnity insurance by adding at least one new mortgage granting institution to the number of approved lenders. The bank expects that it will issue 180 new mortgage indemnity insurance undertakings at a value of $220 million per annum. In addition, the JMB will be aiming to reduce its bad debt portfolio by 10% by closely monitoring the performance of new loans and pursuing the implementation of immediate strategies to dispose of and recover bad debts. The financial institution is also seeking to develop a robust marketing plan to increase income from non-traditional sources such as technical and project management services. Jamaica has authorized its first legal transshipment of ganja through the island. The Cannabis Licensing Authority, CLA, authorized the transshipment of a consignment of cannabis through Jamaica from fellow CARICOM member state St. Vincent and the Grenadines. This means that Jamaica served as a point for transferring cannabis from one vessel to another to facilitate the journey on its final destination. 
The shipment heading to Germany follows St. Vincent and the Grenadines recently receiving an import permit from the Federal Institute for Drugs and Medical Devices. According to the CLA, this sets the stage for Jamaica to become a hub for the transshipment of cannabis for medical purposes. Interim Chief Executive Officer at the CLA, Dania Ashpole, reveals that the authority has issued 113 authorizations for export to local companies in the cannabis industry, 60% of them in 2021. She says the CLA has put interim measures in place to facilitate the legal transborder trade of cannabis as it awaits the promulgation of regulations for import, export, transit and transshipment. Since November 2018, the CLA has authorized local companies to export ganja and hemp buds, seeds, oil or resin and tinctures. These authorizations have been destined for Canada, Australia, Israel, Zimbabwe, the Cayman Islands, the U.S., Portugal, Germany, Switzerland and England. The Ministry of Health and Wellness has distributed 2 million disposable masks to several key entities and vulnerable groups to help in the prevention and control of COVID-19. Schools, frontline workers, church groups and vulnerable persons, including individuals with disabilities, are among those benefiting from the masks. They were procured from various international partners through the National Health Fund, NHF. Portfolio Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton insists that mask wearing remains a highly effective response to the pandemic and cautions citizens against being complacent as the country approaches the tail end of the fourth wave of infections. The virus spreads through droplets, droplets that are more often than not, not seen by the naked eye when you talk. You know, until COVID, when I had to spend a lot of time trying to understand the problem, I didn't realize that we exchange so many body fluids in regular conversation as human beings. Um, it's a lot. You'd be surprised. That's why when the flu season hits, so many of us get it because we are spreading it all over. The lion's share of the donation, amounting to 400,000 masks, went to the Ministry of Education for distribution to schools. Portfolio Minister Favel Williams says the items will be critical as full face-to-face -face classes resume. We certainly want to ensure that our children, our teachers, and the public as a whole have the resources needed to mitigate the spread of the virus. The health and the education of our children is a collective national responsibility. And finally, outpatient clinics are being returned to the Mandeville Regional Hospital after they were moved to the Mandeville Seventh-day Adventist Church Hall in September 2021. The decision was taken at the time to create additional space for the hospital as it managed the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic surge on its services and staff. The clinics are being relocated over four days, ending February 17, and operations will begin on the hospital compound on Monday, February 21. The hospital management has expressed thanks to the Mandeville Seventh-day Adventist Church for its partnership and support, and all clients and staff for their understanding during the period. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. What are we are full of our roots and culture? <laughs> that was in Jamaica 60. Jamaica 60? What a piece of news, Miss Matty. I feel like my heart going boss up. Just in. The island of Jamaica is on the verge of celebrating its 60th year of independence. A holy way of celebrating it. <laughs> they say the people them, you know, them come here, you know. But you see, when our people decide, say the other people, them free paper, or oh, no, them say if it's war, start it, whatever. We are collect medal, panther, you know? a medal. Come on, top. The celebrations are slated to begin on January 1st, 2022. Organized by the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport, we have more in this report. I am on site and planning activities are ablaze. Persons are advised to download the Reggae Jamaica app. To know what it free, why it free <laughs> activities for the Jamaica 60 celebration. Yeah, if you don't know the app, to get the updates then. There's a new financial year coming up and government has been busy crafting plans and, of course, solutions to make the lives of all Jamaicans better. Here is a highlight of the Governor General's throne speech unfolding those plans you can look out for this year. It's building 
a nation of peace, opportunity, and prosperity, the security of our citizens is of paramount importance. That's why the government has been making strategic investments in the security architecture, including legislation necessary to achieve safety for all. Ongoing efforts include increasing new recruits to the police force and providing better working conditions for the men and women. The Forensic Pathology Autopsy Suite is being constructed to aid law enforcement's investigation and evidence gathering for crimes. Just recently, the Operation Get Every Legal Gun campaign was launched and an electronic traffic ticket management system rolled out. Government has also been seeing success from the zones of special operations now in seven vulnerable communities. Collective incidents of murders declined by 63% and shootings by 77%. On the legislative side, since the passage of the Criminal Administration Suppression of Criminal Organizations Amendment Act, there have been 39 convictions involving 11 accused persons. As a matter of priority, the government is pressing ahead with the development of several new and revised legislation. These include the Firearms Act, which was tabled in Parliament and is now being reviewed by a joint select committee comprising members of both houses. There is also the development of the Enhanced Security Measures Bill, the Security Personal Integrity Bill, and the National Intelligence and Security Bill. Housing continues to be a major priority of the government. The National Housing Trust is on course to issue over 8,000 home buying loans by the end of the fiscal year in March 2022. The NHD currently has 12,019 housing solutions under construction, in addition to 24,500 housing solutions in planning across the island. More housing solutions are underway at the Greater Bernard Lodge Development Project in St. Catherine. The intention is to create a sustainable integrated township that is vibrant and resilient and provides opportunity for affordable housing, modern living and access to jobs and amenities. More emphasis will also be placed on social protection with the expansion of the construction of indigent houses. Meanwhile, the Bank of Jamaica is facilitating greater financial inclusion with the rollout of the central bank digital currency this year. This is a big step in building a nation of peace, opportunity and prosperity. At the same time, the Ministry of Finance is moving ahead with the review and implementation of a comprehensive restructuring of the public sector compensation system. This allows for full transparency while ensuring that jobs are adequately compensated. Our economy is recovering with 7 to 9% growth projected for the fiscal year ending March 2022, and employment continues its steady recovery. With that projection and steady progression from the COVID-19 pandemic, government continues to advance the inclusive and sustainable economic growth agenda. Effective March 27, 2022, Jamaica will accede to the Madrid Protocol following the passage of the Trademarks Act in May 2021. This will facilitate international registration of trademarks in up to 126 countries through a single application filed with the Jamaica Intellectual Property Office. Three key pieces of legislation will be amended in the 2022-23 financial year to enable growth in the cannabis industry, prevent business bankruptcy, and counter money laundering and terrorism financing. The growth agenda is also being propelled with the implementation of several large infrastructure projects. These include the advanced stage of the Southern Coastal Highway Improvement Project and construction on the four-lane roadway from Harborview to Yalas, as well as on 10 of the planned 15 construction packages. With master planning and design for the Morant Bay Urban Centre now completed and loan financing secured, development is to begin in short order. This integrated town centre and, com and commercial complex, along with the highway improvements, will be a game-changer for the people of St. Thomas. Also, construction of Jamaica's new Houses of Parliament complex will commence this year. Jamaica's 60th anniversary of independence will be marked by the start of the review process to reform the country's constitution. The process to shift Jamaica's status as a constitutional monarchy will also get underway. The newly established Ministry of Legal and Constitutional Affairs is to facilitate this major development in our history. 
Another milestone undertaking will be to clear the name of national hero, the right excellent Marcus Messiah Garvey, of his wrongful conviction in the United States. And so, as clearly outlined in the 2022 throne speech delivered by Governor General Sir Patrick Allen, the government remains focused on building our Jamaica, a place of peace, opportunity and prosperity. National Foster Care Recognition Week continues with the CPFSA aiming to heighten awareness about this system. To do our part, here are some steps to help you understand and make the adoption process much easier. The Child Protection and Family Services Agency, CPFSA, has taken steps to make the adoption process much easier. Joining me is Adoption Coordinator, Mrs. Maxine Bogelo, who will be giving us some information about the changes made. Thank you for coming, Mrs. Bogelo. Thank you for having me. All right, we're going to go straight into it. What are the changes made? Okay, before 2016, we had a two-tier system. First, applicants were asked to complete a pre-adoption form and then submit that to us. Now that would normally take some time. So we reviewed the system and said that it would be best if maybe we erase that part of the process. So now what applicants have to do is that they go straight to our website and where they will find the adoption forms. The forms include the application form, the medical form, one for the, 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 the child and the applicants, and the guidelines which outline all the information and all the required docu documents that need to be submitted with the application form. Awesome. And what are the required documents? The required documents are the birth certificates, marriage certificates if they are married, um, job letters and income statements, um, references from persons who know them, not a family member. Person, and the, the, the references should not necessarily speak only to the person being a nice or a good person, but it should speak to the how would they care for a child. That should be included, their capacity to care for a child. If the child is in school, we would need a child's last school report as well. So, and when all of that is completed, what's the next step? The next step would be submit all of those to the CPFSA. When it is here now, we would review to ensure that all documents are here. Now, if all the information is there, the, um, the, the application is reviewed, given a number, and assigned to a caseworker. And a letter would be sent to the applicant informing them of this and who the person is. Once the, once the caseworker gets that application, that caseworker would now start to prepare appointments to interview both the applicants, the child, and whosoever, the birth parents, because the birth parents are also very important in the process. And what if there are no birth parents? Well, if there are no birth parents, we would have had um, death certificates for the, um, the parents if they have died. If they are nowhere around or, or cannot be located, there are, there are avenues that we would have to take internally to ensure that we try our best to find them. And once that's completed, what's next? Once that is completed, the officers then would have to do a comprehensive report. And that report would have to be compiled and then submitted to the Adoption Board. Because the Adoption Board is the only agency in Jamaica that can approve adoption at that level. So after the approval, it is submitted to the Adoption Board and approval is given, then it is no preparation for court. A court is where it is finalized legally. How long does that process usually last? The entire process? We are, we are at you now three to six months, depending on if there are no challenges. And once you get to court, then? Once we get to court, uh, well, court is held depending on um, the availability by the court. Some courts have um, set dates, while others 
we'll have to submit our documents and await their decision as to when we can come to court. Now, once the court has signed off on those documents for adoption orders, it is the applicant's responsibility to collect those and they will take a copy to the RGD where they will apply for the new birth certificate for the adopted child. And is there any cost associated with any of this process? No, adoptions are free in Jamaica. Is there anything else that you know Jamaica needs to know about the process? We, we, we need um, adopters, um, prospective adopters, to understand that um, it is important that they submit all the documents and it is also important that they are truthful in the stories that they give pertaining to how a child is placed in their care. Because what we find is that, is that sometimes when we approach bird parents, they are not aware that this child is being adopted. They know that somebody is caring for their child, but th that was not the arrangement that they adopted for. Persons generally who wish to adopt should, um, should love a child, should really want to take care of a child, because it's a lifelong investment. Um, persons, they should have proper accommodation for the, the child. They should be able to financially, can afford to take care of that child. And they should have, they should be willing to accept that child as theirs. And that is very important. Because we see sometimes that persons adopt for many different reasons. And this can affect the relationship of that child for the rest of their lives. How can people reach out to you to find out or to just inquire about the adoption process? Okay, we have a, a email address, adoption at childprotection.gov.jm. And our straight line to the unit is 922-1751. Thank you so much, Mrs. Bogelo. You're welcome. Mommy? Yes, Zoe? Can we read this book? It will only take 10 minutes. Sure, sit down. Every spring, Madame Angel Wing arranges. Do you a have 10 minutes? Read with your child fun. today. Reading with your children for just 10 minutes each day helps develop their language and listening skills, stimulates their imagination and expands their understanding of the world. So, start reading with your child today. The Victim Services Division is providing therapeutic support to children who are victims of crime through the launch of its animation bundle. Here are the details. Children sometimes see too much. At other times, they hear too much and many of them feel too much. There are situations where children become victims of crimes, seeing, hearing, and feeling too much of its effect. The hurt and trauma can linger without the proper intervention strategies. This is where government's Victim Services Division comes in. The VSD is having a far-reaching and sweeping impact as it provides help to this vulnerable group. The Victim Services Division is that division within the Ministry of Justice which is responsible for coordinating the Ministry's support base for victims of crime. Anyone can become a victim of a crime. Victims of crime are often persons who suffer just about any crime you imagine. There are sexual crimes, small children, there is robbery, there is unfortunate, there is murder. We are in the primary victim though has deceased. The secondary victim, which is the family members, are there for the support that we give. We recognize that the, our victim population was getting younger. Whilst we still would have to communicate with them some of the complex concepts that are a part of the therapeutic process. Hence, we needed to find a medium that will allow for us to use their type of language, colors and sounds and movement while well, that medium the ministry found was the use of an animation bundle. It is comprised of eight short films that offer therapeutic intervention and lessons to children who are victims of crime. Your daughter was almost abducted today, but she was smart. She ran away. However, there is more she could have done. Walking with headphones on is a dangerous habit. You must be alert 
pay attention to your surroundings and the dangers around you. Our animation strategy involves the creation of a character called Justy. And Justy represents all that is good and right about what should be done when a child is faced with a difficulty. A child seeing the animation immediately will be able to interact. They are short animation films, so the attention span of the child is not hampered in any way. And our intent is not just for them to watch Justy, but to become and to embody the teachings, the values of Justy in order to help other children. I have not left the house in over three weeks. I came here to work as a helper, and now he tells me that I'm going to work at a nightclub. Put these on and get ready. We're leaving for the nightclub in half an hour. Anyone can be trafficked. It does not matter your age, gender, or race. We also ensure that we would have elected to choose specific topics which were current and will remain current. Um, abduction is a reality. The matter of being bullied is a reality. Human trafficked is another reality and among others. There are eight animation films and these are current we have seen over time. Um, we have had the opportunity to, to have children literally vet the animations and we are very comfortable that they have the content that will re reflect um, concerns that children would want to share with their friends. But why was the Victim Services Division so sure that these animated videos would have or will even continue to pull the required effect? The process of developing an intervention involves doing an assessment. We would have had the benefit of over the last 20 years, 200,000 victims that we would have been able to assess. We would have had clear understanding of what needs to be done to provide support for the victims of crime, hence the program VSD. What we did was to use that 20 years of experience. We have a cadre of trained social workers, psychologists, various levels of competencies to work with children. And we have just managed to package this entire expertise um, into eight animations. I am absolutely confident that they have what it takes to make a difference. So even in all the challenges, the Victim Services Division is working to provide psychosocial support for victims of crime. The division is committing its unit to the advancement of victim rights, including those of our children. And your role can be as simple as speaking up. We need trees if we are to be able to live on this planet. So I want to encourage you to join and partner with the My Tree Legacy Promotion and support your alma mater. For me, St. Peter and Paul, Campion College, University of West Indies, roll out and plant some trees. Register your alma mater for the Forestry Department's My Tree Legacy Promotion and be a part of the preservation of Jamaica, land we love. Let us highlight your contribution Submit videos or pictures of you leaving your mark. Every tree counts. Plant a tree today and keep climate change away. You've just seen and heard about 30 minutes of tips and information on a range of things. But just in case you missed any of it, a refresher of today's journey can be had through our YouTube channel. There you'll also get the chance to see our other shows, newscasts and features. So watch away. Also, you can visit our Facebook, Instagram and Twitter pages for more information. From all of us here at the GIS, I'm Theodore Henry. See you soon. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.